problem number six. So here uh, uh, we are given with this some set. I'm not sure uh, if that set is convex or not, but I know that the set is not empty and it is closed. Okay, so S is not empty and closed. And also, I know that there exists a supporting hyperplane on on every point on the boundary. So if I have a set and I have hyperplane on all the points of the boundary, uh, basically it is asking us to show that the set is convex. Uh, and and actually, this is true. Let us say this is a boundary point. Okay, this this is one boundary point. Let us say all these are boundary points. Okay. So. If you have hyperplane passing through all the points, basically what you're saying is that this is a hyper supporting, by the way, supporting hyperplane. This is a supporting hyperplane, supporting hyperplane, supporting hyperplane. All the boundary can be represented as intersection of uh, half spaces generated by supporting hyperplane. And if that is the case, then for sure the, the, the set that is result uh, is the intersection of all the supporting uh, half spaces uh, coming from the supporting hyperplanes is convex. So that is what it is actually conveying us. It's saying that this set, this this uh, set, is is convex. Okay. Um, so let us uh, see how to prove this. Uh, but it says to write the statement in if if then form. So I can say that if. Uh, let us write it here. If S is non-empty, closed, uh, and okay, so I just use this non-empty, closed, and has supporting hyperplane at every feasible point, every not feasible point, every point on the boundary, huh? Every point on its boundary. So this is given to me. And then what do I need to prove? I need to prove that that S is convex. So this is what is. Uh, so uh, there were some hints given, but um, you, you could also disc discard the hints and prove in your own style. Uh, how many of you were able to use the hint and prove it? Or in general, any? how many of you were able to prove this? Okay. Nobody's doing that. Don't tell me that you didn't knew it. You have to prove right? the question and nothing then just to prove. Right? There's no other thing here. So, okay. So, only one guy uh, tried to prove it. Okay. Two, two, only two, three. Okay, so you, some of you guys did try to prove it. Uh, I'm not sure why the others are not responding. Uh, at least it's clear from the question you have to prove here, right? You cannot say it was not clear. Okay, um, I'm not sure uh, why not everybody is raising hand, but uh, I hope uh, you know you guys try to prove it. Uh, so let us see, uh, uh, in this question it says, you know, uh, pick two arbitrary points, uh, x1, x2, inside the set, uh, and some point y, which is outside of the set, and then try to see how we can write the relation between x and y. Uh, now, I'm not aware of the, the, the shape of the set, okay? So let us select two points, x1, x2, because the set is not empty, so I can select those two points, x1, x2, that belongs to the set. Okay. And let us say some point y is outside of the set. So the, the, the set can be any uh, arbitrary shape. So let me draw something weird, really, you know, not convex. Something like this. Okay. So because uh, it says that uh, there exists a supporting hyperplane, yes. Yes. Coming uh, that S is convex. No, we have to prove that it's not it's clear. We have to show that it is convex. So why are we drawing a non-convex set? 
just because we are not yet sure, so I'm, I'm trying to draw some, just, to, I mean, here, the, still, we didn't even go to this point. I'm just trying to show how a point outside and inside uh, will be connected, okay? So this okay. boundary doesn't matter. After a while, I will just uh, change the boundary, okay? But this is just, you know, a random boundary. So uh, because it says that there exists a supporting hyperplane, okay, uh, at every point in the boundary, what basically we are saying is that uh, if I draw some hyperplane, something, okay, like this, yes, if I draw some hyperplane, and the equation of this hyperplane will be, let's say, P transpose uh, some point X minus Z equals to zero, where Z is that point on the boundary. Right, Z is that point on the boundary. And this is supporting hyperplane. What does it mean? It means that all the points will be on one side. And if we transpose, we transpose X minus Z for any X, which is feasible, should be, let's say, uh, assuming that P is this side, pointing towards Y, angle is more than, let's say, 90. So this one is saying that, uh, this is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, for all, x belongs to s. And same thing, if you look at p transpose y, it is strictly less than zero because it's on the other side. That's what the hyperplane is doing, it's separating, uh, also supporting. Supporting means basically the entire set is on one side. This is what exactly is the support, and this means it's also separating. So we don't even need this assumption. So we can just ignore it for now. But actually, this is what it says. That means what? That means for any two points x1, x2, p transpose x1 minus z, which is this point on the boundary, is uh, greater than or equal to zero. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm assuming that p is like this, huh? Let me just use a different color. So I'm assuming that P is outside. This not less than equal to zero, Doctor? Yeah, so that's why, yeah, that's why I came back because if the angle is more than 90, so here I'll be placing this condition, okay? So I'll just flip this. All of this I'll flip. It depends on how you assume P, vector P, huh? It's not, it was not wrong, but because I assumed vector P to be on the other side, uh, angle is more than 90 or the dot product is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so I'm just flipping this just because in my mind I have vector P that is in this direction. Okay. Towards Y. And you basically P, if, if somebody wants to, uh, somebody asked what is P vector, I can say that P is nothing but Z minus Y. Where Z is the closest point, just like we discussed in uh, question number five in homework one, uh, sorry, in homework two just now. Uh, y, Z is the closest point to Y. So vector P will be nothing but Z minus Y. Uh, okay, minus Z minus Y or Y minus Z. Yeah, y minus Z. Z. Minus Z. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I'm changing it. And uh, yeah, that's correct. Y minus Z. And so that will be the vector. And based on this notation, at least I can say that this is the case if I have uh, uh, the hyperplane. So that is how things are related. Uh, X1 related with Y or vector P, which is in turn related with Y and X2 here. So this is what is asked in question B. Now, really, I would like to show that uh, the set is convex. So I'm not sure if the boundary is like this or what. what is the shape of this set. I'm not sure. I just draw this boundary randomly and I'm not sure if this is true or not. So uh, I would like to make a contradiction. So I'm going to say that S is not convex. Uh, so this is my contradictory statement. Uh, I'm saying that by contradiction, S is not convex. So this is my contradictory assumption. Okay. All right. So what is the meaning uh, of this contradictory assumption? It means that the set I have should be something like this. If that is the case, uh, if I try to draw the line 
segment between x1, x2, uh, uh, it could be the case that the line is outside of the set, right? If the set is not convex, then I can easily find two points. This is the meaning of not convex set, right? There, there will be a little part of the line segment going outside of the set. Is it not? Yes, doctor. Set is yes, not doctor. yes. So let us say there exists such point X lambda, which is on the line segment of X1, X2 for some lambda, for some given lambda, which is outside of the set. Okay. So if, if set S is not convex, there exists a lambda such that X lambda doesn't belong to the set because the set is not convex. So that the uh, 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 line segment may not be in the set. So there should be at least one point outside the set. So there is a set. Uh, so there is a set here and a point that is outside of the set. Also, uh, if if uh, there, there is a you know um, uh, x lambda which is outside of the set, okay. That implies what? That implies there exists, let's say Z1, Z1 belongs to S such that the distance between, uh, such that distance between X lambda and, or you can say it like this, such that Z1 is closest to x lambda okay like before uh, because there is a point outside of the set i can find a point which is closest to y bar right nearest to y bar but because set s is convex we said this is unique if set is not convex will this be unique no no it will not be unique but but uh, can i still say that that Minimizing point or the projection exists. Yes. Is it always the case yes. that this will exist? Well, it is. It is always the case that it will exist because set S, okay, because set S is non-empty, okay, close, and I can remember in, in in the one of the theorems I said we can draw a big arbitrary circle, and and can also assume that it is bounded so the set is non-empty bounded and closed of course bounded is something that i have arguably added and also the distance function the norm is it continuous function is norm a continuous function or not yes yes continuous, it is continuous. yeah so i know that the function is continuous and the set is non-empty Bounded and closed. So, can I say the optimal solution exists? Yes, we can. Yeah, this is because of the Weierstrass theorem. Okay, we have the the Weierstrass theorem sufficiency condition. So, because uh, of this, so that means Z one exists, although it may not be unique, and I don't care if it is unique or not. All I need to know is that it exists. Okay. So, in the picture, if I show you, maybe Z one is here which is, let me show you with a red color. Maybe Z1 is here, or it is here, or it is here, or anywhere else. So it is not unique for sure, but it exists, okay? Because Z1 uh, is on the boundary, okay? And, and the point will also on the will lie on the boundary, right? Uh, so there exists, Z1 belongs to uh, the boundary uh, of, of the set, okay? Because Z1 is the point that belongs to the boundary. Uh, I can say that from the from the statement, uh, there exists a supporting hyperplane at Z1. And how will that supporting hyperplane look? It will look something like this. Some P2, different P, okay, P2 transpose. Uh, any X belongs to the set minus Z1, right? Uh, the way we are describing it should be less than or equal to zero. Or any point that is outside, like x lambda, uh, should be greater than uh, zero. Okay. Doctor, will you yes. re-explain for the x lambda correlation with z1? Because in here, 
uh, x lambda is not uh, sub uh, part of subset uh, set s uh, but uh, uh, your conclusion then uh, it will have a z1 yeah because this is the point outside of the set so because of the weierstrass theorem i can say that there is a point closest to x lambda in in, in the set and that point could be here there or there or anywhere on the boundary then what is the arrow after x lambda uh, in here you give the arrow and there exists z1 uh, yeah to so the... because x lambda does not belong to the set i'm yes. saying that there exists some point which is on the boundary such that that point is closest to x lambda and the reason why this is true is because your set is non-empty bounded arguably because i can draw a big ball and can enclose everything and uh, closed the set is closed it's also given to me here if you remember this is part of the given statement so because of all of this and the, the distance itself the way we measure it is, is a continuous function norm function is a continuous function because of all of this the above one is true okay, okay. so it means if x lambda is part of sets also it, it, it will conflict right uh, it also implies that x is z1 in in the boundary of s also Love, so that is, x lambda that is, it. is uh, belong to s uh, it means the x lambda is uh, become conflict right doctor if x lambda belongs to s we don't even have to discuss all of this because if you took any two random points x1 x2 that belongs to the set and if you show that x lambda also belongs to the set that means the set is convex but here we don't have that luxury we don't have that uh, 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 you know assumption right so here we have to show whether this is true or not okay doctor thank you so once again, uh, what we did so far, we have uh, 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 taken two points, x1, x2, that belongs to the set. Okay, so this is our start. x1, x2 belongs to the set S. And then, because it's given that uh, the, the, the hyper supporting hyperplane exists for all the points on the boundary, I took the, the supporting hyperplane at, on a point such that x1, x2, the entire set actually lies on one side, and... Uh, one of the points which is not in the set lies on the other side. Although I, I don't have to discuss this part now, so, but I have just kept it because here we can see it is going to be repeated later on. So I have a hyperplane at some point passing through some point on the boundary such that x1, x2 lies on one side of the uh, hyperplane. Now, if by contradiction, I am assuming that the set S is not convex. So if the set S is not convex, then for two arbitrarily point x1, x2, the point on the line segment, which is x lambda, will not be part of S because this is a non-convex set. If that is the case, then x lambda is outside of the set. So I can separate this point from the set. Not only that, uh, so, sorry, not separate, my bad. Uh, x lambda is outside of the set, okay? So I can find closest point inside the set and why this minimizing point exists, why the projection exists, because of the Weierstrass theorem. Uh, although it may not be unique, that's why I showed you different uh, possible points for the projection of x lambda. It could be here, there, there, anywhere. But the projection is not unique, but it exists. So let us say that Z1 is one such solution. And because Z1 is also on the boundary, uh, I can say that uh, I can find a supporting hyperplane passing through the boundary. Why? Because this is given to me that uh, for the set S, every point on its boundary has a supporting hyperplane. What is the meaning of supporting hyperplane? It means that every point in the set will be on one side of the hyperplane. For example, here I'm saying less than or equal to zero. And any point that is not in the set will be on the other side of the hyperplane. For example, here, uh, this is the case. Okay. And uh, Doctor, can you repeat why it's less than or equal to zero? So direction? Uh, the less than or equal to zero because of the way we, we created the convention that if the vector is pointing outside of the set, the, the normal vector is pointing outside of the set, 
So every set is on the other side. So the, the, the angle between every vector is more than 90 or less than or equal to zero. So that's the same uh, convention I used here. Okay. okay. All right. So now uh, we have this that P2 transpose X1, uh, X minus Z1 less than or equal to zero for all the points in, in the set S. That means I can say that P2 transpose X1 minus Z1 is less than or equal to zero. Also, I can say that P2 transpose X2 minus Z2, not Z2, sorry, Z1 okay, is less than or equal to zero. Why? Because both X1, X2 belongs to the set. Uh, because this is a supporting hyperplane, x1, x2 should satisfy. Okay. Let me write it here. This equation here is true for all x belongs to a set. Okay. And this one is for only x lambda. Now, taking these two equations, if I multiply by lambda and 1 minus lambda on both sides, Here you have zero, so it will disappear. This is what I will have. If you add these two uh, equations, what you will get is lambda P2 transpose X1 minus Z1 plus 1 minus lambda P2 transpose X2 minus Z2. Okay. Both of them less than or equal to zero. Just by you know rearranging this, Thing, I can get something like this, P2 transpose lambda x1 minus lambda z1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 minus 1 minus lambda z2 plus another equal to 0. Rearranging uh, you see that this term and this term has some similarities. Uh, and, and why did it become Z2? Should be Z1. Okay. You see that this term and this term they have some similarity. So you can say P2 transpose lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 and uh, minus lambda minus lambda will cancel. What I will get is just Z1 is less than or equal to zero. Or I can say P2 transpose X lambda minus Z1 is less than or equal to zero. This thing is exactly opposite of what we have here, right? You see, here I'm saying X lambda minus Z1 should be less than or equal to zero, but this says it should be strictly greater than zero. So this things to, these two are inconsistent. So the inconsistency happened because we assumed something which is not correct. And the only assumption that we made was this. So that means this assumption, one, is not true. Okay. Not true. That implies S is convex. So that was the proof. Uh, of course, you have, can have different styles of proving things, uh, but here we use the method of contradiction and ensure that uh, if the set is not convex, then there is no way you can find a supporting hyperplane. And that's exactly what it means. That's exactly what's going on. Uh, if there's a supporting hyperplane everywhere, it means the figure should be something like this, not like this. There's no way it will bend inside. That means it should be a convex set. Okay. Are you guys with me? Yes, Doctor. Doctor, and the way we assumed X1 and X2 and X lambda with the hyperplane, um, yeah. it seemed like the way we assumed, it seemed like uh, X1 and X2, they are in one side of the hyperplane where X lambda is in another side. I mean, that that was what we assumed, right? Like yeah. according to... The only thing we assumed here is that uh, this is, uh, set S is not convex. 
so that's the only assumption that we made. But everything else, we have no assumption. It is true for based on what is given to us. What is given to us is that you have a non-empty closed set which has a supporting hyperplane on its boundary. Okay, so that's what is given to us. So supporting hyperplane means what? Supporting hyperplane means that the entire set. Uh, if if there is a supporting hyperplane for set, it means what the entire set will be on one side of the set. That is the meaning of supporting hyperplane. Okay. Yes, doctor. Yeah. So that's from the definition. So that's why if x1, x2 are points in the set, then they must lie on one side of the hyperplane. This is not an assumption. This is given to us. Doctor, can you scroll down? Okay. Uh, it's not coming. Okay, Doctor, here, uh, here, uh, what you have written, uh, then you multiplied with lambda and one minus lambda at the end. Yeah. But here we are saying uh, p p uh, two transpose um, x one minus z one less than equal zero, and then uh, x two minus z one less than equal zero. So this means, yeah. and also you wrote uh, something like uh, p two x lambda. Uh, greater than zero. So this means ultimately x1 and x2, they are in one side of the hyperplane and x lambda is in another side, right? This means exactly, yeah, that's correct. But we are not assuming this. Okay, this is not an assumption. Why? Because we said x lambda is outside of the set, right? Yeah, that's the wrong assumption we assume. That's why it came like this, right? Exactly. All this happened because of this thing, which is what S is not convex. Yes. Because of this contradictory assumption, things came here, which was not right. And because of this, we'll get something which is inconsistent. Okay, but if you talk about assumption, the only assumption we made is here. Everything else is not an assumption. It is consequence of something that we made earlier. Okay, doctor. Dipti, uh, can you scroll? Scroll down. I think I, we, uh, maybe Hassan got disconnected. Any other question? It looks like uh, for my way, get ah. Uh. Go ahead, go ahead. Dr. for my way, we get uh, now we have lambda x1 minus lambda. Lambda z z one right, but why why is uh, lambda z uh, lambda that's beside uh, z one in the in the ne in, in, in next formula? Uh, yeah, this they will cancel out. That's why I, was, I highlighted this part that they will cancel out. Minus lambda z one plus lambda z one will cancel out. Mm hmm. Okay. Any yes, other okay. question? Okay. Yeah, there was another question. Yeah. Doctor, here we replace y, y x lambda, or what's the job of y? The job of y here? You mean the job of y here? Yes. Yeah, the job of y here is just to show uh, when we say uh, supporting hyperplane, how we can you know connect the points which is inside the plane, uh, which is inside the, the 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 set, and a point which is outside of the set. Okay, so uh, you can always have a supporting hyperplane, uh, which is separating a point which is outside of the set with the points inside of the set. And how do you get such hyperplane? By finding a point which is closest, which is closest to Y. So a, a, a point uh, which is closest to Y, like Z bar here, for sure will separate Y from the, 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 the points in the set. And that was the idea of, of using Y. And later on, this Y is actually, the, the, the role of Y is, is mimicked or is, is kind of repeated by X lambda. 
and so it will also help us to see how um, things with y is actually repeated with x lambda. Easy to see. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other? So uh, looks like the only thing we uh, we have skipped is problem four proof. But really, there's nothing uh, can prove it from scratch or from Farkas lemma. But uh, because some of you said we have not even seen that you have to prove that. So try this, and maybe in the class we can you know quickly go with the proof uh, for problem four. Um, Just a second. Um, Mona, I didn't hear you. Mona, you said something. I didn't hear you. Uh, for number six, part C, doctor, it is the same with part B or different because? Yeah, the, the proof is part C. All of this from here is part C. Where we should start from somewhere part C, I don't know where. But this is all part C. Maybe here so, by contradiction. So this is where part C starts. For part B, uh, up to where? From there? Part B where? is just this part. This part, part B. Oh, so, okay. okay. Part B is only these two. Uh, that's it. Actually, this picture, everything is discussion of part B. Because okay. part B is just asking us the relationship between X1, X2, and Y, where Y is, is inside B. Any. Okay. Yes. Uh, go ahead. So. Shruk, go ahead. Yes, doctor. Uh, regarding problem two, if I want to prove uh, non-convex, I will follow the same logic of convex, and uh, if it doesn't work, just it, or there's some tips I should add. For, for which for problem two, I didn't get which problem. Regarding which problem? Problem two. Problem two. Problem. Yeah, problem two. Um, uh, uh, again, if you can show it graphically, uh, if you have you know any set with uh, two dimensions or two variables, uh, a, things can be shown graphically. Okay, so the, for two dimensional things, proof by by drawing is acceptable. But in general, for n dimension, proof cannot be done graphically, OK? So that is all you have to remember. Now, to disprove, uh, to disprove, you can disprove graphically. You can just give one counter example, and that's it. You can say it is not right, OK? Yeah, so. I'm not sure if there are questions. Any other questions, guys? Oh, thank you for your time, doctor. Um, I think it's helpful for all of us. Um, regarding this file, the file where you wrote, I'm not sure if we can get this. Maybe it will be also helpful. And uh, maybe the rec recording is uh, maybe st will be stored in the system or in this uh, channel. I'm not sure. The recording, maybe I think, it will be this, in this channel, and I think you can download it later on. Uh, okay. Yeah, but okay. this file that I, that was I was working, um, I actually, I can give it, but I don't want that. You know, usually the homeworks I repeat the questions, so I don't want the new uh, next batch to just okay. get it for the previous batch. Okay, uh, because true. then they will not think, uh, they will not see why we have to think in this direction. They will they will not see those hurdles. And they will actually uh, say now they know how to prove because they just read the proof from the past semester. Uh, but when it comes to the exam or quizzes, things will be much difficult. So I want to avoid that uh, to transfer. And that okay. was, that's the only reason here. Otherwise, there is nothing. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.